Alright guys, go over some quick ECU mods, point these out. This is a rough way to do it, but we're making it work. Alright, so this is an MS3. So this is an MS3 daughter board. Um, as you can see there, uh, it's supposed to be called as U2. It's actually a NAND gate, a four channel NAND gate. So what I did is I removed the NAND gate and then just jumpered across output or input one to output one and then input two to output two. And then uh, what happens is the other part of that circuit actually presents itself. Uh, let's see, here, there we go. And these two pins on the end and these two pins on the end. So what I'm doing is I'm bypassing the NAND gate and routing them straight out the two, the two sets of outputs on the ends of this uh, DIP 40. As you can tell, I removed all of the components across the top because we're not going to need those anymore. What I'm going to do is replace all of that with this guy. This is my homebrew board. It's got a, a pair of six and a half amp, I believe it was, uh, dual channel MOSFETs, so four channels all together. You can see the flyback diodes on the right, and I had to add two to the other channels on the back. So, uh, off on the right side, across the top, you can see it says 12 volts ground, channels D, C, B, and A to the left, the ground in the center. So this will all get plumbed in to where all of that stuff used to be. And that way I'll have two extra channels being driven by... Uh, I think it's timers, timer one and timer three, and I'll have to figure out how to set those up and see if I can get those to work, and I'll reassemble everything and do a test. All right, guys, here's the finished product. Got my board. I showed you earlier, all outfitted. All the signals coming in the yellow, orange, green, and blue, and then the whites and reds go to the appropriate output channel out to a harness and then the blacks are tied together to a ground on R37 and there you have it so I'll reassemble everything and I'll do a test uh, with the MS3 hardware all fired up or powered up and um, see if I can drive some of the solenoids on the valve body using the mega squirt hardware as is and we'll see if we can get that to work hey guys we're making some progress Got some code sorted out and uh, finally got it to compile. I had to shuffle a bunch of uh, subroutines around because it wasn't fitting within the flash pages, but finally got it all figured out. And uh, so found some bugs and we're fixing those, getting it working, trying to do some testing, trying to sort out the four outputs, figure out which ones are actually called, whatever they're called. <laughs> so between injector one, injector two, and then the supporting P two PWM channels. Uh, trying to figure out what exactly those are called in the in the on the hardware and in the software side, so they correlate correctly. But I go ahead and cheated, uh, pulled out this old resistive bank. Um, I'm just gonna try to get. I'm just gonna try to get them working with a resistive load in there to reduce the current down, and then I'm not gonna worry too much about PWMing the hardware. So. As we speak, it's loading the new firmware. It's going to take a little bit of time, but uh, do some more testing. Also figured out my um, ch my channels for gears one through six, whether it should be on or off. Primarily concerned about A, B, C, and D. Um, not too worried about E just yet, but the idea is I need to get these to turn on and off in the right sequence. So still trying to sort out which location is tied to which function. So I'll, in the end, I might have to shift some names around to get the outputs to correlate correctly. So I don't know. We'll see. It's getting there, though. Hey, guys. I made some progress. Sorted out my software bugs. Still, I'm not a professional for sure, but I can sure hack it up enough to make it work. So here we go. i uh, show you what I got going so far. It looks like it's going to work. So on the right here is my resistive bank. Each one is 7 ohms. 
So 7 ohms plus the 5 ohms gives you 12. So you're looking at like 1 amp draw on each channel when it's activated. So valve body still there. Harness. Got my battery. Uh, grounds, powers all ran up here. So on Tuner Studio, I have, uh, let's see here, throttle position, downshift threshold, upshift threshold, vehicle speed in the bottom right, the current gear, EPC. So the idea with the EPC is I can move the throttle around and get line pressure should increase and decrease as we go. So we'll start out throttle about 20%. And what I have done is I've tied tack out to my vehicle speed input. So as I crank the engine RPM up, we start getting a vehicle speed. So 11 miles an hour, we should have. So there's second. Torque converter lockup. Third. Torque converter lockup. Fourth. Fifth, converter lockup. Sixth, with the converter lockup. Yep, there we go. So I verified the outputs that are working to the solenoids. That seems to be working. So over here, I pretty much made a cheat sheet which uh, output is going to which output on the ECU from the transmission to the ECU. And so that's what I got kind of going right now. I might change it a little bit, but this is just to kind of test the hardware out, see if it's working. So, and then we can also show a downshift. So we'll drop the throttle down somewhere about 10%. And we'll go ahead and take some speed out of it over there on the right. We should get a downshift out of 6th to 5th. Torque converter off. 5th gear. 4th gear. 3rd gear. Almost lock up on the torque converter. Second gear lock up. And then down to zero mile an hour. Gets us back to first. So there you go. It's a quick demo of the 6R80 valve body with an MS3.